Uh, yeah, it just was a it was a tough day at the office for us today. Um, that's for sure. Auburn's got a really good team. Uh, they're aggressive. They feed off of of energy and and uh, momentum, and they got momentum. And um, we had a couple times where we was down to twelve. It was around a twelve point, and it was back and forth a couple times. We couldn't really. I think we got it to ten once, and we had a good look at a shot that could get it to eight, and that just you know. From from the from our guy's psyche changes a lot of different things and we missed that and I think they scored but uh, but anyway they 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 played well well um, they competed really hard our guys competed we just uh, we didn't play well we didn't play well today and uh, at this time of the year that means that they make you go home um, so hats off to them but uh, I am proud of what our guys have accomplished and 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 then uh, you know how they played in terms of how hard they played as well. All right, questions for either of the student athletes and a reminder to uh, identify yourself and the outlet you represent. Let's start right on the front row on the left. And David Cloninger, Post and Courier. Uh, BJ, it seemed like, you know, what makes them such a tough matchup, especially in the post? What do they do to try to get you guys out of your sets? Um, they really try to, like, pressure the ball. That's really, like, the main thing for them. Try to rattle you by getting all up in your face, just um, pressuring the ball a lot, trying to be more physical. Um, that's really something that they're known for and that they try to do to get you out your game. All right, next question. Let's go to the front row on the right. Elijah Campbell, 107.5 the game in uh, Columbia. BJ, you mentioned the physicality. I mean, it looked like they were letting you guys play pretty early on in there. And with a team like that, uh, it looked pretty tough. What was the physicality like in there, and how did it kind of affect the rest of the game? Um, it was pretty physic uh, physical, and the physicality was high. The rest are letting us play, so just get in. When you first start off, if you go into the basket and they allow you to play like that, that just sets the tone for the rest of the game. You got to meet that. Let's see a question on the left. Let's go to center aisle, second row. Uh, Jordan K with the state in Columbia. For Jacoby, uh, you guys on defense have talked so much about wanting to force other teams into those mid range jumpers, those twos. And it seems like Auburn tries whatever they can to not take those shots. Uh, <laughs> what was it like defensively uh, going up against them? And, and how hard was it? Um, they they came out and ran their stuff. Uh, we always try to do what we try to do defensively and, you know, force them into pull-ups and floaters. But, uh, you know, they hit shots today. They play really well, like Coach said, and, you know, that's tip our hats off to them. Other questions for either? Any others? Okay, come back to the front row. David Kloniker, Post and Curry, for both of you guys. How, I know this one stings, but how much is it a relief to know that on Sunday you're going to hear your name called and you will be playing somewhere next next J week? Jacoby, would you take that first? Yeah, I mean, I've been on the other side of the boat where, you know, this is your, your season ends here. So it feels good to know we have some season left, and we're going to keep our heads up and look forward to figuring out where we play it and get ready to work towards that. Same for BJ. Um, yeah, just like Jacoby said, um, I mean, Tips off to them. I mean, I've been on the other side too. Not ending the season off right here, um, but happy to be able to find out where we play Sunday. So start off a new season off. All right, we got time for maybe one more for either of the players. Any, anyone? All right, we'll excuse you, fellas. You can return to the locker room. <laughs> yes, <sir>. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll continue on with uh, coach. So. Raise your hand. Let's go ahead and start again on the front row. Lamont, you know, I guess a lot in the aftermath, the, the words were bad matchup. What yeah. makes them such a bad, tough matchup? For yeah, you guys? I mean, I think that's I think that's a fair assessment. I would have to say, just based on our personnel, um, <clears throat> because they're they're suited to take away some of the things that, and there aren't that many teams that have been able to do that, but they're suited to take away some of the things that we like that make us comfortable. Um, I think I think it's a combination of uh, uh, they play they're very aggressive defensively um, and then they're athletic and long um, and they're they're not afraid to be physical and and bump you know and so it was a physical game and this is not an indictment on the officiating at all I, I even told those guys at the end of the, the game but if to if if our matchup versus them is officiated that way. That's not the way we would prefer the game to be officiated with them because they are so they are so good laterally 
that they can press up and pressure you. And then most of the things that you do to alleviate that pressure are more difficult, are made more difficult because it's hard to rip drive them. You rip drive them, and they and they and they're not afraid to body bump you. And you know they're not. The, sometimes games are called in a way where those are fouls. You know we played in a game where there were 64 free throws shot in one game. Other games they're not called. And so today was one of those days where they were letting that stuff go. Um, and then so then to try to get your guys to say, okay, this is how the game's being played. We're going to body bump a little bit more. Well, that's not really what our guys do that much, so it's it's hard for them to make that adjustment. But I think that was one of the biggest things on the defensive on, on I mean on the offensive end for us. Um, and then oftentimes that carries over into what you're doing defensively. It just does for guys at, at, at this age, and so it was uh, it was hard for us to persevere. Other questions? Let's go to the middle of the second row right here. I thought you guys uh, were getting back in the game. It was 35-25, and then uh, Chaney Johnson went on a little 5-0 run, and then they got another stop. Denver Jones caused a turnover, and then it just turned into a quick 9-0 run. Was that the key sequence and where the game just sort of got away? Uh, I mean, that was the last opportunity for us in the minds of the players. That was the last opportunity, I'm sure, that they really said, okay, we're really going to do this now. We're really going to make our move and win the game. Um, probably in their minds beyond that, it was hoping that you would do enough things that you could get back into the game. Um, so I thought that was a pivotal stretch uh, uh, for them, particularly that it was an, uh, it, they answered the move that we made to get it to 10. Again, I, 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 I referenced that possession. It was 10. We had a good look at a, at a two-point basket that could have cut it to eight and then who knows after that but uh but instead they went on a run there and then that uh that had an impact a big impact on uh, i think where the mindset of guys were the rest of the game question on the right second row uh, alan cole game scoop.com you've been through this wisconsin chattanooga now you're about to have more time off than you get pretty much at any point during the season what does a week between a conference tournament and an ncaa tournament look like for these guys yeah, well, I think one resting up. Um, you know, we'd like to play as many games in this conference tournament as possible. We'd like to win this conference tournament. Um, but uh, the silver lining in it, in it is that we got a couple guys banged up. Uh, you know, Miles Studi, as you noted, noticed today, was not dressed up, and so that's more time for guys like him. Uh, Talon looked like he was banged up a little bit today, and so I didn't have him back in it towards the end of the game. And so uh, I think what it does is give guys some time to to rest up and, and heal up and get treatment and recover. Um, I think that's a big part of it. And uh, so if not for winning at all, I guess this is probably is, you know, some people would probably prefer this rather than play another game and still not win at all. Um, now, some seeding things may go into that in terms of the NCAA tournament, but uh, uh, I just think it'll be a good time for us to get back and try to try to get off of our feet, rest, um, and then do a lot of recovery. Okay, let's go to the center, second row. Then, then I'll get you. Um, I, you guys have only played in like seven games where you haven't got 68 offensive possessions or more and dropped four of them. How... How do other teams dictate those things? And you know, is that a big key of emphasis of like, okay, we need to play at our pace and that's how we're gonna win games? Yeah, I, I mean, part of it in this game was that we, we couldn't, we, we had a hard time manufacturing stops. And that's become a good thing for us is you're gonna, if you look at pace is a little, it's a little bit of a misnomer if, if you don't know exactly what goes, all the components that go into pace, uh, i.e. If you get an offensive rebound, that counts as the same possession. We're a pretty decent offensive rebounding team. But for us, I think our offense is generally started better on a miss, right? If we get a defensive stop, it allows us to make our first action happen with less resistance, typically. Um, because some teams specifically, a lot of teams specifically, try to make our first action difficult for us. 
Uh, and sometimes that's counterproductive because it makes us run even more offense on the possession. But we like to we like to get stops for a lot of reasons. One of which is because it does trigger us into a, 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 a an, our initial action happens a little bit quicker, and we can get into some of the things that we like better on the offensive end. So um, because there were so many. We were getting so many. They were scoring so many baskets. We weren't getting stops, and then they were pressing some on the end of that. It just it it got bogged down a little bit for us on the offensive end, and so um, you know that was that was a big that was a big part of what happened. All right, center aisle, third row. I asked you yesterday, you know, about playing that extra game. You said it only really hurts you if you lose it, but coming into this really tough physical matchup today, do you think you guys are a little bit tired? Nah, not at all. I don't think so. I mean, I hope that that's not the case, that you play one game and then the next day you're, you're so tired that you can't win. Um, and, 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 and really, in a largely non-competitive way towards the end of the game, um, because that wouldn't bode well for most teams that are in this tournament, right, uh, or uh, playing in the NCAA tournament. I think at some point, if you the benefits really of of moving on uh, or, or of securing buys, whether it's the single buy or the double buy, is that the likelihood of you winning five games in a row is, is probably significantly less statistically than winning three games in a row. Um, and so therein lies the benefit, I think, of, of getting a double buy. But I did believe that getting here with a single buy and seeing teams play, getting a feel for the atmosphere of the tournament, the environment, people running around, watching games, knowing that you had that extra day, and then coming out and playing. If you play in that game and you play well, I think it's a real benefit to you. I do. Um, uh, uh, so I don't think playing a game had a whole lot of impact on, on uh, what the outcome of this one was. OK, we'll take a couple more. Get the front row right here, and then I'll come get your way in the back there. I know you've been waiting. Lamont, I know you mentioned earlier that you know there were some mistakes offensively that you thought carried over to the defensive side of the ball, and that you know the inefficiencies on offense had a direct result on defense. What element of your defensive performance did you really see that kind of take in place? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there was. I'll tell you one was uh, uh, second chance situations. You know, they ended up with twelve second chance points on I don't know how many offensive rebounds it was, but twelve second chance points I think it was, and so. Um, that's typically we do a pretty good job in that area. Um, so I think that was one of them. And again, that's a, that's they do that. They go to the boards. But we've got multiple teams in our conference that are in the top three, four, five in the country in offensive rebounds. And so we've had to. We've had, it's not our first time going up against a team that's really effective in an offensive rebounding situation. So I, I think that was one. Um, just. Overall energy and ball pressure, even uh, uh, just general competitiveness on the defensive side of the ball. You know, you see it. Guys make a three, and then all of a sudden they're in a stance as they're coming down. Uh, you know, teams like to pat the floor and tell the whole world that I'm going to try really hard on defense this possession. I made a, bu a bucket. Um, I think that's a universal sign for that. But uh, they're connected. For the best teams, you can you can separate those two and have a rough day on one of those and still find a way to get the other one done. Um, but I think for the most kids, it is. It is. They are connected. And for us, I think it let us, it, it, it affected us a little bit on the defensive end. But that was, those were a couple of different areas, I think, was uh, uh, just blocking out. And then I think, think uh, ball pressure and then our just overall defensive competitive energy. All right, last question far back on the left. Hey, Coach, what can a loss like this do for a team uh, heading into the NCAA tournament? And looking ahead, what are some of the positives that can be taken away from a loss like this heading into next week? Well, I mean, to be completely honest with you, I think it's, I think it's probably on to the next thing at this point. Now, um, you know, if you look back at your body of work and you've won 15 games in a row coming into this, and maybe you feel like your team might need something like this. Maybe there's something to take from, from losing a game like this. But honestly, hey, we wanted to win. We were playing as hard as we could. It wasn't our day to day. So uh, uh, by the grace of the basketball gods, um, they're going to call our name on Sunday. And we'll be elated about that. We'll rejoice in that moment. 
Um, we're still building here. That's been a thing for us. I've, I think that's been the general theme. I've talked about that a whole bunch. And uh, what, a, what a tremendous accomplishment it will be for this group to be able to play a game in the, uh, or more in the NCAA tournament. So um, we'll, we'll find out where we go. We'll rejoice in that. But uh, I think this game, it is what it is. Guys will talk about it tonight. Some of their families are here. We'll wake up tomorrow morning, uh, fly back uh, to Columbia. And uh, the excitement will start about what the next adventure is for us. And it'll be, uh, it'll be a, a, a really special moment for us to, to be able to see our names called and start the preparation process for, for more survival in advance. Thank you. Thanks.